has the same name, Brittany. And hi, everyone, and good afternoon. I hope that everyone had a wonderful week. Welcome to Jennifer's Perspective. And today, my very special guest, I have two very special guests today. And today, my first guest is Mrs. Dr. Jane Guyan. Am I pronouncing your name correctly, Jane? It, it rhymes with twin. I'm married to a twin, so it's twin. Oh, oh it's Jane Gwynn. Okay. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and Jane Gwynn is a relation, a relationship coach and in the bend who helps women let go of their sexual shame and help them to feel more confident and learn how to ask for what it is that they really want in all areas of their life. She is delighted to share her vast knowledge and experience of, regarding sex intimacy and communication using gentle humor and friendly conversation. She's been rapid, happily married for forever and <laughs> has six mostly grown up children and slight modification. She works as a relationship coach for women who want to let go of their sexual shame and feel more confident. She also teaches men how to please women. And Jane has been married for over 30 years. She and her daughter is pregnant. <laughs> and <laughs> everyone, welcome Jane. And our next special guest is these are two beautiful, awesome ladies. And now with Brittany, her name is Brittany William. And let me just open the other screen here. Did I open this correctly? Google. Hmm. Now, Brittany Williams is a transformational embodiment coach and sex doula. And <laughs> did I pronounce that correctly? And you may know her as the creator of the Naked Edition and the Selfie Workshop and Embodiment Tool. Brittany is a conduit for all things transformational and embodiment, and Brittany is committed to supporting and healing the wholeness journey that brings women from potential to raw, unapologetic power. Okay, all right, awesome, awesome. Ladies, uh, say hello to everyone and introduce yourself. We'll start with you, Dr. Dr. Gwynn. Oh, it's so exciting to be here. I'm loving just getting to know you a little bit, Jennifer, because we haven't met outside of just, you know, the wonderful relationships that happen out on social media. So, mm -hmm. so fun to be in your space. And um, it's a huge honor to be able to be with the Brittany Williams, who I, she is, she is a sexual doula for me in my sexual relationship with my own body and myself because i've just experienced the magic that she creates for me and for my clients as she uh, led and has led me and and my clients through this beautiful journey i'm sure she's going to talk about so um i'm here in the middle of oregon and i do have you know six grown-up kids and i'm expecting my grandbaby to be here any minute so super excited over here in the mountains congratulations thank you <laughs> very fun now Brittany, introduce yourself yes i am the Brittany r williams i know people have resistance around using the d but that's important to me um because I, <laughs> yes, <ma 'am. laughs> I am in a position and in a season where there is no explaining, there's no apologizing, there's only defining yourself in the space. And that's what I support people to do, to be able to use that lower energy, that bottom up experience to mm. let it serve you. There's so many times that our sexuality is placed on the stage. We think that it's for everybody else. And mm -hmm. it's such a powerful transformational journey when your sexuality is turned in on yourself the way that you love, your love language, all of the ways that you care are turned back in on yourself. 
That's mm-hmm. what my work is about. And that's the transformation that I bring people through. And Naked Edition, the Naked Selfie class. And that's why I say it's just like, <laughs> it's just like I wish it was about, the, was about the pictures, but it is not. Um, you do get amazing <laughs> pictures and I support people mm-hmm. to do that. And, and you will be able to have those skills forever. But the real truth, the real sacred piece the the real energy of what I do with people when I'm using that tool because it's just one of the many tools that we use mm-hmm. um, is being able to see yourself first and learn to muse your be your own muse mm-hmm. and that is the power of that and being able to get to a place where you understand and realize and exercise that sacredness of your own self your own sexuality, your own energy, and you are defining yourself out. You, I deal with leading women, ambitious women. So being able to take, to let your trauma know, like you're not going to keep happening to me over and over and over again. (laughs) Um, And I'm not going to also, I'm also not going to let you hide in my sexuality so that you stay active. Mm -hmm. So we go to mm-hmm. explore, we expose and we expand past those stories um, mm-hmm. and deeply unravel those things. So nobody comes mm-hmm. to me without resistance. If you don't have resistance, mm-hmm. I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, Dr. Jane, did you take, uh, did you participate in Brittany's uh, class or Brittany, did you participate in Dr. Jane's class? How did the two of you connect? Uh, well, I, we're both in a container with another coach and somehow this, the Naked Selfie edition came through my feed and honestly, I didn't know a darn thing about it. I didn't know, Brit- I didn't know the Brittany Williams yet. I I didn't have that that honor yet, but I it just sounded like intriguing to me. So I signed up and and I gave sent the link to my daughter who was at that time very early pregnant. So it was amazing. Mm-hmm. I knew nothing. We showed up on this Zoom call, and I don't know if you know this, Brittany, but at least in my screen, so I was there and Ray was right next to me. Like, and it just felt, and I knew she had a baby in her womb space. Um, and I didn't, I still don't know if that baby is a, a coming into this world in a female or a male body. And um, I just like being there with her, like potentially three generations of women um, in that one space, letting go of shame was so powerful. So I am Brittany's client first, and I, so I had that honor, and then. I invited her into my group where I help women to release sexual shame. And we did this as the peak experience at the end of 14 weeks together so that she held space for a group of women I'd been guiding. So I'm her client. Wow. And Brittany, tell, can you tell me how long was the, uh, was the program? Um, it's actually it's kind of on a workshop basis. We spend about 90 minutes to two hours together. Mm-hmm. So uh, you can think mm-hmm. of it as... Can you see the baby? Can yeah, we see the baby? Oh, oh my baby. gosh. The worst Hi, baby is resistance, resistance. So I decided to stop fighting her and just let her come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and what's her name? This is Essay. Her name is a... Um, Hi, Essay. Hi. Can I see your beautiful face, princess? Let me see. Let me see you. Oh my oh, God, she's goodness. adorable. So Hi, hello. What? Hi, I'm my T Nana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, because I have nieces and nephews, like they're the same age. Oh my God, no, beautiful. Really? <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna be quiet, okay? <laughs> are you gonna let, are you gonna let mommy do the interview? All right, let me talk, okay? <laughs> so, but the actual session is about ninety minutes to two hours long, and I will usually tell people I was just like, this is a taste because there's so much mm-hmm. more after that. But this is you think of this as your initiation back to yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and that's usually that's what it is. And so, it's a workshop um, that just it we just turn our that space into a sanctuary for that moment and mm-hmm. we get we really tap into ourselves during that two hours awesome awesome now it's a two hour workshop and 
do you have are you offering any other program yes i actually i do a lot of private work because of course when you're dealing with trauma and sexuality everybody's unpacking it differently i do a lot of private work um and also um this year we're going to do it from a community aspect where i'll be running a 12-week program throughout the year um awesome. initiation um and so we'll be going through we'll be going through that people start seeing more of that um because the next naked edition session is actually about to open up in two weeks and so it'll I run it in seasons because it's it's exclusive and I, and I, it's not for everybody. Uh, and so I definitely I run it in seasons twice a year because the activity mm -hmm. and the work itself, I have noticed that it keeps working for about it's, it's six months activation. That's the intention behind it. Mm -hmm. um, like the one that we'll be stepping into next season is all about trust um, when it comes to your, right. body, your body's wisdom, being able to unlock trust, restore trust in back into your intuition and kind of nurture that intuition over again and use that body wisdom to lead you to that next level and so that's the activation that's coming out in this next season in season two of naked edition okay then i will have to touch bases with you after the show can mm -hmm. i ask you another question jane uh dr jane mm -hmm. How did you become a sexual guru or a sexual sex therapist? Are you a sex yes. therapist? I'm a sex coach. Um, mm -hmm. I, 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 it came out of my own story, Jennifer. I was like so many other women. I started, actually, I started my career as a nurse. I ended up living in different countries, you know, ha was honored to do that. Ended up back in the States and I, ended up with a big family and I just did a whole bunch of parenting <clears throat> and a whole bunch of like really high end parenting. Like I took my role as a mom to a level that was, you know, kind of ridiculous. Like I made all the costumes, you know, I just, I became like my whole ego became connected to my kids and what they were doing. And I lost track of myself sexually and it almost destroyed my marriage with my husband, Jim. We went through difficult times. We ended up in counseling and somehow I woke up. Like, I feel like I'm kind of waking up right now after this whole election season. I kind of woke up again and sexually and was like, what, what am I doing? Like, where did I go? How did I become more interested in like brownie Girl Scout stuff than like having a hot evening with my partner? And you know, what happened to this part of me that was really very embodied? I was just always living from the collarbone up. Mm -hmm. um, I was, I wasn't as, I didn't go as far as wearing turtlenecks constantly, but it was like close. And um, I, my whole ego was, was connected to like this group of women in my community who were similar. We were all like great moms in quotes, you know, like over parenting all the time, super connected to our kids e as our own ego outlets. And so I, I, I stopped and you I, um, hmm? you forgot about your husband. Well, I forgot about myself, actually. I was actually... Okay. I, so I how did you reconnect him. with you to reconnect with him? Because you yeah. have to connect with yourself first. Exactly right. Um, well, first of all, and for anyone who's listening who finds themselves, herself in this, this situation, it's, it's, got, it's getting raw with yourself. And this is what happened with me. I got raw with myself. I got real about, like, my unwillingness to be uh, vulnerable, to mm -hmm. re receive pleasure, to, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of made this lie up that, that I didn't care or need anything. I was always about giving and putting out instead of being in <clears throat> the feminine and receiving. And once I did that, then I was able to see that I was, I was actually robbing myself of so much pleasure, so many positive things that were available for me right in my own relationship and in my life. And um, then I went on this long journey and I ended up training and I trained in many super sexy places in the world, including Amsterdam and Vegas and San Francisco and LA and all over the you place. Just, you just that. really opened up your mind and your heart just to start to learn to receive yep. because you've been, what, a caregiver for what, 30 years? very long time yeah it had been wow. it had been at that point however long it was and of course i and i had elderly parents you know and i was like so many people and i was very muted my language was very muted 
my willingness to like use my seductive female energy in my life was very muted. I had this like weird hybrid of the masculine and the closed down feminine that just was tight. And I, you know, like my throat chakra, all my pieces like were not really aligned. And, um, and oh. even my sense of humor was not there for me because I was in victim mode a lot. Like I was drained. And the work that Brittany does, that the Brittany Williams does, is so important for somebody like me because it's about embodiment. And that's where really I felt my my journey started. My kind of rebirth started was becoming embodied again and, re- and like starting to feel myself again in all the ways. You found you. You reconnected with you. And yep. once you reconnected with yourself, then you were able to rekindle your marriage and restore your relationship with your husband. Is that basically what you were saying? Yes, that's that's correct. And and just and honestly, I became a lot more selfish, uh, which I I I encourage us to do. In a good way. In a good way. Yeah, in a good way. <laughs> uh, and like speaking, what like and, and not being the martyr. Like, oh, don't worry, I'll do it. Like that part of myself disappeared. And it was like, you know, what I really desire is, you know, to be, you know, to sleep in and be with you and connect and go on an overnight and some of these other things that like I was way too busy. I actually wrote a book called Too Busy to Get Busy that is, you know, really spoke to me as uh, a woman because I, you know, like I was way too busy for that stuff. I was like doing Girl Scouts. I was like, that was all about helping everybody else. You was doing the Girl Scout. You were the soccer mom. You were at the PTA. You were you were really engrossed and involved in your children's lives, and you forgot to you forgot about you. Yeah, I actually had a business I ran at that time. I was an importer, but interestingly, I imported paper mache piggy bank. So I had a business called Piggy Plan. So I was the pig lady, and I would like take these piggy banks and I sold them to schools, nonprofits, and churches for them to use in their fundraising. So it was like even my business was all about that, and you know I didn't make any money doing it. So it was like everything I did was like shifted right through that channel. Instead of a bigger space where I could really be fully expressed. Okay. And Brittany, what did you do before become um before becoming a transformational life coach? Um, I actually my work itself, I started off in molecular biology and mm-hmm. I market I repurposed those skills to let people in finance and risk management know that like my intellectual, analytical, and my investigative skills would serve them as well. Um, they jumped on it, and I built an amazing career uh, for t- for ten years that has gotten recognition. That like my God, you still look career. like a baby. I'm, I'm yeah, 34. Well. I'm, I'm 34, but you look I, like a baby. <laughs> and so, like that's that's the work that I was doing uh, before I got into this real soul purpose work. And honestly, I got to the point where um, I decided, like I said, I decided not to compartmentalize. So even in a corporate mm-hmm. space, I still mm-hmm. teach people how to incorporate empathy and play, and still it's be hot. the most pro- productive high performers. And so my teams that I run are usually the most high performing teams in the organization. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. at a regional level um mm-hmm. but we i still they still show up really fucking human um because they have an empathetic leader who allows them to be human um i encourage mm-hmm. i have team meetings where we don't talk about objectives we play games sometimes and mm-hmm. my people go out and they kick ass all the time and so the the corporate arena is also recognizing this work as well and i'm just going i keep inviting it because it can be used everywhere I do mm-hmm. my work with sales teams. I do my work mm-hmm. with sexuality groups. I do my work mm-hmm. because there is no sep- time space separation for the way that we use our energy and prioritize ourselves. Mm-hmm. And, and this is mm-hmm. very generational and ancestral for me because I'm mm-hmm. not from a lineage of women who prioritize themselves. That's why I tell people, I said, like, I'm not, bring that back full circle. And I tell them, I was like, my grandmother used to sneak off from her house when her husband went to work and pick cotton when she was pregnant with my dad. 
And mm-hmm. I'm just like, and my mom, my mom's mom, they got meat in their house when they got a tip, when her mom got a tip for cleaning somebody else's house. Mm-hmm. So I tell mm-hmm. people, I'm not from a lineage of women mm-hmm. who prioritize themselves. This is new information. And the deeper mm-hmm. I go and the more that I heal thyself, I'm also healing that lineage. I'm healing that ancestral. Mm-hmm. I'm bringing and breaking the generational curses. And so I'm mm-hmm. just, I'm, and that's part of, and like I do something with my clients where we actually uh, focus on sexual intention to create our, to create a sexual legacy. And mm-hmm. it sounds really intimidating to a lot of people because when you're in a place where self prioritization is not normalized, mm-hmm. and you don't think that that is available to you to mm-hmm. make your sexuality, your wealth, your power, you know, your money. Mm-hmm to have all those things intertwined and saying, this will be my legacy. Like I'll be mm-hmm. known, a part of my wealth is my pleasure. A part mm-hmm. of my wealth is trusting myself. A part of my wealth is having a legacy of self love that my children get to benefit from. Mm-hmm. Like, and so that, that, that has been really important to me. Um, and I'm honored cause you said like, I, I feel like a baby most of the time. And I was just like, but mm-hmm. I start. I, I started off my journey. I went through a divorce with a four month old, and mm-hmm. that was the time when I was holding that child. I realized the pattern had to be broken because mm-hmm. my mom went through a divorce when I was just like my mom went through a divorce when I was really young. My grandmother mm-hmm. raised nine children on her own, and I realized that it was more than just oh, there's a generational curse of singleness. I said it, it was more of a ancestral, it was more of an ancestral wound to the idea of being completely supported. And that's what I wanted mm-hmm. to attack. That I felt like that was the root cause. And so I set out to say, I will be more supported than anybody in my, my lineage had ever experienced. And I got mm-hmm. a lot of shit for being that way. I had a baby, I had a night nurse, I have a nanny now, I have people that come in my home and fix food, they come in my home and take care of my kids' hair. And I take days off from work to do absolutely nothing and have a babysitter the entire time. And that was something where like my family was just like, I had that feeling of who do you think you are? Mm. But I realized that at the time, normalizing support for me and make getting myself really comfortable. I stopped calling myself a single mom and started calling myself a supported mom. Mm-hmm. And I started using these little things, making these little moves in my life, not to get a man, not to please a man, not to make more money, not to do anything. I did it because I knew that I wanted to have the feel, the, what I wanted to know what it felt like to be supported, to be able to trust myself and be really comfortable with who I was and not feeling like I had to change every time I showed up at, a, at, a, at another person's table. And mm. it does something. And it changed, it changed my relationships. I started, cause I, you know, I always preach people like you, you teach people how to treat you. And mm-hmm. I realized that I had to be my, be my best partner first. That's why I'm like so ecstatic that I got to practice this and do this work and exercise my pleasure muscle as a single person. Mm-hmm. Because my, and I, because people always say, well, how do you have these hard conversations with a partner? Cause I have a partner. They're just like, how do you, like, you know, a lot of men aren't on the same page when it comes to this tantric journey. And I'm just like, I'm talking about three hour womb orgasms that work, that wake you up out of your sleep. I'm in that deep of pleasure at any mm-hmm. given moment. And women are just like, how, like, how are you doing this? Like, and, and how do you have <laughs> conversations? And I was just like, I live, I don't talk about the things I do. I live this out and I'll just let them recognize me and see me. Mm -hmm. I said, the conversation becomes a lot easier in that moment. And I say, I know, I knew I had it right when my partner came to me and said, I realized that you are completely satisfied and it doesn't have anything to do with me. Can you teach me? Mm -hmm. That's when I knew I had it right. And I was just like, this is the stuff that I want other women, especially these women that have faces like me, who, mm-hmm. <laughs> who don't know this? <laughs> I was just like, this is the this is what I want. I want them to know. I want them to know that this is available. That you get mm-hmm. to live like this. Let me tell you something. Uh-huh. Someone, I think someone asked me one time, like, do you just have? Because I've been in that space where I've had. I call it sessions, <laughs> and I say sessions because. 
It's not a one hour thing. It's like a three hour. It's like a friggin' like, okay, if I'm going to have sex, do not waste my time because yeah. I'm, I'm serious. And I say to myself, like, don't waste my time because I like total pleasure. It's because it's important to me because I know what I like from what I don't like and what I want from what I don't want. And I sit down and I say to myself, okay, then. A lot of people don't understand like, okay, their own personal bodies. They don't understand their bodies. They don't understand what it is that they deserve as a woman in, I guess, in life. Because Jane and Brittany, there is an age gap between the two of you. And I think yeah. between all three of us, we're probably like at, what different generations and stuff like that, but we still have the same need. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, and a lot of women will not accept themselves for who they are. They're afraid to look at themselves and say, okay, I need this. This is what I need to help me to feel better, do better to live freer or live supported. And I think this is where Brittany's uh, transformational classes is amazing. It is absolutely fantastic, Brittany. Oh my God, you're gonna have to come back and like, like, <laughs> like share with me, share with me the things that I may have to end up taking a class on a different level because I'm cool with my body and this stuff, but I think I have like issues in, in like other areas. So, oh my God, this is fantastic. And now are you still her student or you just took the, the one, what was it? A two hour transformational class? Yeah, I did. Well, I did the one last summer and um with Brittany and then she I I was a participant with my students uh which was interesting getting you know being naked and being with my group of women I've been leading was a really interesting um felt like a little bit of an edge and um yeah we did that recently just the other day a couple of weeks ago yeah it's been since the holiday so um Jane is so huh? auntie now. She's Auntie Jane now. Because like we're family now. Like we're yeah. family. <laughs> what awesome. Well, and you know, we've kind of touched a little bit on one of the other pieces that's floating in society right now. It has been for so long, but just like the whole issue of like living in a white body for me as a woman has been um, you know, obviously I live in this the the a body that's that's white privileged every day of my life. And um, and that piece has been a powerful piece too. Just kind of recognizing the privilege of my skin color, and um, and and figuring out how to kind of connect to something that's beyond that. Like, what does it mean to be white in this society, and what does it mean to be um, to be a person, you know, just like connected to other people without the whole. Uh, um, all of it that has to do with whiteness and all of it that has to do with blackness and all of it that has to do with I'm parenting people of color. Um, and my grandchild will be a person of color. My step my son -in -law is, a, is a person of color. And so and just like a piece you. around, thank you, around embodiment and how you know we can become more um, embodied in a way that is full of love and compassion and rather than carrying all the pieces that we carry in our bodies. I think that finding pleasure in that and somehow releasing all those pieces and all of the burden and the, um, all of the armoring that all of us have as individuals is a really important part of this conversation too. Sexually and otherwise, I think that our sexuality is really defined by our, our race as well. The way that society looks at us sexually, I think is defined. Now, can I ask you a question, Jane? Um, mm -hmm. For you to be, for you to take the class as, uh, and Brittany for, to teach the class as a woman of color to help you to explore your own sexuality. Mm -hmm. How 
like when to realize the privileges that you've had as a white woman in this country and then Brittany, you as a black woman in the United States now you have like an Auntie Jane and you and Jane are <laughs> sisters. Did you find that, because most people don't know that only your skin tone is like the 1% that really separates you as a, as a human being. And we get so caught up in the color of a person's skin, but we don't get to see them for who they really are and that the treasure and value that they can bring to another person's life. So when you took the class, um, when you took Brittany's course, where were you, what mindset were you in at the time to bring you like, like God is really good. God just put you directly in her path. Where were you mentally and emotionally? Mm. Um, it was, so last summer I was connected to Brittany and, and again, I didn't know her, hadn't met her before. And, um, it's been an interesting piece for me to know that my grandchild is being raised, being brought into this world that just is so, there's so many pieces there that are so hard for, nice. um, um, like I just, we could talk about that for a very long time about how what it feels like to be in relationship with, with, um, with my, with that piece and recognizing the privilege that that little child won't be automatically given, which is so fucked up in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so, um, I guess for me, Brittany is, Brittany transcends that the sense of color. And at the same time, she holds space for every human being in, in the zoom room to be in their own skin in whatever way they're experiencing their skin. And they, whatever way that woman is experiencing being seen, one of the people in my group is a trans woman. She didn't come into our space. She wasn't feeling well, but that was gonna be an interesting thing that, to like invite her. And you know, she's living in different skin in her way of seeing herself. So I, I guess for me, it's, the experience of being white has, long been um a journey of uh of uh clarifying and recognizing and and seeing differently than i used to see seeing differently is happening for me over and over again um in all sorts of different ways through my very close black women friends and through family and all the the relationships with my my step uh, my son-in-law is cameroonian Canadian and has this huge Cameroonian family and we're family. And um, so that's an interesting thing too. I mean, just there's just been, I feel like I have had a, a very a, a powerful journey this year. And along with so many other people, um, it's been a really powerful journey for a lot of people have been waking up this year, this last year. And, um, but it's for me started before that. So when Brittany was a black woman, that was just like yummy for me because I felt really happy. <laughs> I feel really held by her and um, and maybe her blackness helped me feel safe. I don't know. There was something about the way that she is in herself that made me feel really able to um, let go of some of my shit that I, I just, I don't know if it's, it's maybe, you know, of course she lives in her blackness right now. And so that's the way I, that's the only way I experienced her. Um, oh. It was powerful. It, both times it was powerful for me. Not specific to color. We didn't talk about color, but you know that we were seeing ourselves wrapped in skin, and because of that, we, you know, color is there. And that's like, I feel like right now in this moment is actually the first time I had like this obvious awareness, like oh, there's a generational gap and there's a cultural gap here. Mm -hmm. And I said that as a person that was had created a space and was facilitating, um, like with Jane and other people like her, and also in her group. Mm -hmm. I can say as a it's it's not always easy to show up in leadership as a black woman because people mm -hmm. usually want to excessively make us prove ourselves that we're worthy of being there. And mm -hmm. that's one experience that has let me build a relationship and want to keep showing up in all of her spaces and love her so much is that I didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. I was able to show up as me. 
I didn't mm-hmm. have to, oh, I didn't have to go through, jump through all these hoops to show that I was worthy to show up and that I would, that I could create safety for you and I can cater to all of your fragility or anything that happened. She didn't require that of me. So that's mm-hmm. why I consciously, I have just thought about some of the gaps that we did bridge. Yes. I didn't have to be anything more than me. Mm-hmm. And I was able to come and show in my power. And that's one thing I am. I am. My leadership is decolonized. So, yes, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to pretend to be something that I'm not. I'm not code switching for you. I'm not doing anything, but I'm going to show up as me and I'm going to let you see all of me. You can take mm-hmm. it. You can leave it. And she mm-hmm. took it. And, <laughs> and that was one of the things that feels really good to have a relationship like that with anybody. Mm-hmm. To be all of you and somebody and feel seen and feel heard and feel known and that's my experience with this space is that i realized it was evident for me as a leader that i was just like damn like i told these people that i won't be giving them my credentials and i won't be telling them how qualified i am to be here i'm going to share my lived experience and i'm going Mm -hmm. to show up in a powerful fucking leadership that i know i show up everywhere oh my god let me tell you something i love your authenticity i love your diversity and i love the originality Mm-hmm. Your originality, just show up as who you are. You don't have to pretend. I see a lot of people say to me, when I did my naked, uh, I did my photo, and a lot of people, you probably don't know, but I'm I'm me. I mean, I can't be anybody else but me. I love me. <laughs> and I say that like all the time because it's been years since anyone even told me that they love me. And I got, because between the drugs and the domestic violence, the suicide attempt. And I got over what adult illiteracy at the age of 38. I was addicted to crack cocaine but up until 38. I'm in my fifties now. And I sit here and I say to myself, I'm the author of three books. I own my own company. And within seven, what's what? 16 years, I've helped so many people hmm. just like to kick the habit, mm-hmm. learn to love themselves, to get rid of the self shame, to get rid, to have self confidence and self respect, and learn that you are enough and you are capable, and learn to love who you are just because you're alive. And a lot of people don't, th- a lot of people think they have to prove themselves. I don't have to prove myself to nobody. Life then taught me a lesson. This is me. And I'm evolving every day. And I love diversity. I love humanity. And it's the differences that we have that gives us knowledge and information. Because in order for you to grow in, as a human being and evolve as a human being, you have to, oh, we only use 10% of our brain. We use 10% of the brain. So what are we doing with the other 90%? Uh, like, okay, are we experiencing new things? Are we trying new things? Are you even getting in touch with the God that is within? And a lot of people don't understand that. And we have to get to that point now where you have to be open. You have to open up all the chakra points because, and not just here and here and here and here, but all of it because it's all of it makes you, you. And you have, you, you, I sit down and I say, think, but you too, ladies had did with the classes is that you got a chance to connect with each other, to accept each other, to learn from each other, to grow, no matter what the color or the title was, is that we can all learn something from each other. And you seem to be much happier now, Jane. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. One other thing I got to say about this this story (laughs) is if I said after the first time I did it, um, that it was like five years or 10 years of therapy in Mm -hmm. one two hour episode. And Mm -hmm. I, after I did this, the, uh, first one, I honestly slept for like two and a half hours. I was so exhausted just by the energy of letting go of all that shit. And then the second time I like I created space for the nap. I said to my people, the women in my group, 
um, who are, you know, varying ages, some older than me, some younger, some lesbian, some straight, um, again, sure. some trans. I said, you know, like, carve out We just have a diversity. Right, and I needed them to be able to have time to rest because afterwards, you're, Brittany's correct to say that this is an activation. It is something that happens and then it continues, like the energy from the experience continues honestly for months. You have to give yourself space in your being to allow that to start to happen. It's so powerful. And really, Brittany, I think that it is powerful it's, it's a powerful experience for anyone to do for themselves, to see themselves naked and, with, and try to let go of the, the shame filter. But your eyes on us is what made it feel so sacred and um, so transformational. And um, I just like, I just love you and what you do. And I, as I said, I've said to Brittany, I want her to do this every time I run a group. That this will be an offer that I give to my people as a gift so that they can start to feel her presence and let themselves heal from some of the pieces that each person individually has uh, as a woman. Now she reminds me of Rihanna. <laughs> yeah. I can see it. I'm like, okay, I can see this because you're both standing and walking in your power without the self-shame and the negativity, but you're showing up as your true self and you are welcoming the evolution of Brittany Williams and Jane is welcoming the evolution of Jane Gwynn and you're not resisting it. And you're finding that you're flowing and the harmony that is happening within your life is, is much better. You're in a good space, right? Yeah, for me, for sure. Um, and I'm just making space for more, um, more pleasure and more rest. I love what you were saying, Brittany, about get, being a supported mom and having like creating space where you're you're home and you have a sitter and you can like really enjoy yourself and have pleasure. That's fantastic. And the whole tantric thing, we got to talk about that. Cause I hadn't, I hadn't heard that part of your story. <laughs> can you share that with us? I can give it a little taste. Um, like I started studying, I started kind of intellectually <laughs> kind of bringing in like, okay, this tantra thing, I heard the word, like, what is it? What does it look like? Um, I started uh, using the yoni egg. So I am a yoni egg practitioner and I do this with my private clients um, mm -hmm. around trauma. And I remember at the time that I started this, you guys, the word pussy made me so uncomfortable mm -hmm. that I, it made me cringe in a way. And I realized like, I probably need this more than I think I do. <laughs> and I remember getting my, I got a jade yoni egg and the, idea like i i i used to have it under my pillow i would put it in my bra i would have it in my pocket it would just follow me around all day and i was like and just trying to set the intention with it like what is this and like it you know it was something that i was drawn to but figuring out and i it's a lot of it was an intuitive journey there was nobody helping me with it it was just intuitive mm -hmm. and i it's one step at a time was happening um people would fall into my life that would really embrace me and would listen to my story and they you know and provide resources and support for me throughout the time that I was going through this. Cause I think I was like, my celibacy was like about three or three and a half years. And I, yeah. and I started this three and a three, three to three and a half years and just really trying to focus on my body, not, mm -hmm. not performance. I was can, really I ask trying you a, can I ask you a question? Because I've been celibate for like years because between building the business, writing the book and everything, I just like don't have time for that. How did how did you handle that? Because with you being celibate with the Tantra journey, did you rediscover who you are or what it is that you want, demand and respect and expect? I've, I've started to know exactly what I wanted. I got really clear. And, and honestly, I'm known for clarity. And I was, mm -hmm. like, I was really clear on what I wanted. I start, I put, I laid down a lot of, I laid down a lot of fears. Okay. I laid down a lot of fears. Go. Okay. I have a <laughs> here that's homeschooling too. Yeah. But I laid down a lot of fears. 
I laid down a lot of fears that where I was afraid to ask for what I wanted and to define myself in any space because I was they used to call me whispers y'all like I'm on here talking all big and bad but people <laughs> call me whispers because I would not speak up for myself I would literally yeah. talk like this and hope that nobody saw me or heard me you know <laughs> and I used so, to be like that I used to be and, like that and so and like so me like too. my transfer journey let, especially doing it as a single person let me do those things and so and then I had to get really comfortable showing up like that with a partner and and get into a place where sexuality, because I experienced childhood sexual trauma, I never felt like any part of my sex or sexuality ever belonged to me. It never you know, it felt like something that was that was stolen from me and that per and those and that person still possessed it. Mm that person still owned it. And I had to get, let my journey was a journey to deep, deep healing, to releasing that and re, rediscovering, unraveling that old story of my sexuality and letting my primal wisdom, the wisdom of my body create a new story to me. So it's like, you talk about us using 10% of our brain, about the other 40% that we're not using, it's the trauma stories, the old brain, the things that our grandparents experienced, it's still happening. And that, yeah. and that amygdala is still happening in that old brain. And so to be able to unravel those stories, to be able to create a new story, which is creating a new life, which is transformation. I, that journey that I had, my tantra journey as a single person was unraveling those stories, unraveling generations of mm -hmm. like what I call resilience, which is just honestly socially accept, acceptable repression. And mm -hmm. <laughs> being able to unravel that and say like you know what i don't have to be strong i don't have to be independent i can be supported and i can show and i'm not weak because i want to be supported and so it, yeah it was a journey to a deep deep pleasure but it was more of a journey to unraveling stuff that was in my dna and creating something new that allowed me to expand beyond my imagination because my imagination only knew of the limitations of that the stories and the past experience had put on me. Mm -hmm. And so it like pleasure has nothing to do with another person now. And it, I, what I say, I always tell people, I just like, you can step into this, but it will ruin your sex life. It will ruin the sex life as, as, as you know it. It will ruin you performing for other people. It would ruin you faking it just for the sake of somebody else's ego or your own ego. It will mm -hmm. ruin your sex life as you know it because you won't be able to operate in this linear form of sexuality that says, thank you, done. And you're, you're going to be in a regenerative, <laughs> you're going to have a regenerative <laughs> sexuality that's going to say, hey, I experience deep pleasure and deep pleasure serves me from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. And I get to absolutely. Like oh my God. Absolutely. Good for Thank you. you. I love that resilience is, with socially acceptable repression. I'm yeah. so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say yeah. that? Because not too many women are bold enough or uh, or have the courage enough to just be, like, just be. You ain't got to be this person or that person. Just be you. And when you do you, you realize what it is that you want. You, real, you find your happy space and your happy place and what turns you on and, you know, you walk within your power and you also find humility in the process and gratitude along the way. Yes. Yes. It definitely yes. it's definitely it takes ego out because people don't realize you think ego is just for like narcissists and people who think that they're too much. When you think that if you're walking around thinking that you're not enough and you're walking around stuck in these patterns or insecurity, that's your ego as well. It's not yeah, really. because you won't show up and the mm -hmm. other people do and they take up all the space. The idea that you have power that could be serving you and you're not taking up space, that's ego as well. So mm -hmm. being able to let that die on all fronts. It's not just the people who think that they're too much and are constantly bragging are the ones that's in ego. Like, no, you being yeah. afraid, you hiding, you performing, yep. you, you speak, totally. and being three different people a day. When you're three different people a day, because you're just trying to hide, you 
that's ego as well. And I think that that's the part that we have to realize that our even when we're operating in insecurity, it doesn't make us, we're not a hero. You know, you know much of a hero as you are a victim when you're operating in insecurity. And so those are the pieces that I love to see fall off of women. Mm -hmm. and those stories and these these obscure definitions of like who we are, you know, and people telling you who you have to be. I have women who are, you know, oh, they're just like, well, I was told that I would never have a healthy relationship because I'm too hard and I'm too masculine. And I was just like, well, let's talk. Are about you really? That. I've had women that tell me that because I deal with really ambitious women and I, I was a 15 year old who was a power lifter. I could bench press 150 pounds 10 times if I needed to. And a woman told me at 15, they were just like, a man will never want you. You're too hard. And I and nobody around, all the adults in that room, nobody stood up for me and said a thing. And so that's why I actually used the Brittany Williams, because that is part of that story. It's because I want you to know that I'm not subscribing to whatever standards that you have had for me. This is the definition of who I am, and that's what you're going to have to accept. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, wow. Do you have anything else? I think we have another seven minutes. Any golden nuggets that you would like to give with us, uh, Jane and Brittany? Jane and Brittany, <laughs> be present in the moment. Yeah, and just have speak you, the truth. Have, you, speak have truth. one of you written a book yet? I did, I wrote Too Busy to Get Busy, which is a book I wrote back about five years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you, Brittany? I'm actually working on my first book now. And so I'll, <laughs> I think it'll be released at the end of this year. I should be done with it. Nice. And we can get your book, um, Dr. Jane, on, where is your book? It's on, on Amazon. Amazon. Yeah, on Amazon. On Amazon? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And can we get the dot coms and where they can find and connect with you both? Uh, I'm at how to fix your sex life, how to fix my sex life dot com, how mm -hmm. to fix my sex life dot com. I'm inviting women into a container starting at the end of February, where we're going to start unpacking sexual shame and um, working toward sexual confidence for women of all sorts of backgrounds. So mm -hmm. find that there. But so it's how to fix my sex life dot com. I'd be honored yeah. if it didn't show up there. And Brittany? Yes, I'm at um, BrittanyRWilliams.com and you'll find a lot of, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm millennial, so you'll find a lot on social media. So you get my- You're Instagram. an awesome millennial. Awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome. I love mm -hmm. this generation for real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, so my Instagram is the underscore BrittanyRWilliams.com. Oh, yeah, I'm Instagram. And are either of you ladies on LinkedIn? I am. Yes, I am. Who said that? Who else is here? Jane, you're on LinkedIn? Yeah, I'm on, I'm on LinkedIn. Yeah. Okie dokie. And I think that would be it. Uh, I would love to stay connected <laughs> with the two of you. Mm -hmm. And I'll continue to follow you. And please, both of you, you are welcome back anytime to get just to do an update and say hey jennifer this is what's going on what's new blah 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 and you're welcome back as my guest anytime thank you so very much honor and respect to the Good both honor. of you thank you so very much for the time for the empowerment for sharing your stories and journeys and just feel free like woo <laughs> <laughs> Can I say that? Because I really, really love to see women just do their thing and <clears throat> just be in their own power, accepting themselves like, okay, I am enough. I am capable. I can do this. And I don't have to apologize to anybody for being me. Hello? Yeah. Hello? 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 Yeah. 
<laughs> because you're being you and you're being you. And I think what you've also learned was self-acceptance. Totally. And self-acceptance is essential and is such a vital thing. And when you accepted who you are, Brittany, and you accepted who you were, Jane, you also realized, Jane says, well, this is what I need. And Brittany says, this is what I need. When we don't accept ourselves for who we are, we can never really find the answer to, you know, everything has an answer. What is the answer? Self-acceptance. Once you start with the self-acceptance, the answer will end up showing you in your celibacy journey, you found what? A new passion, a new career. Like I think I honestly, my that part was just like self-acceptance is the foundation to self-mastery. I, mm -hmm. I found more of me uh, that was hiding mm -hmm. underneath all these <laughs> cro crooks and crevices of society mm -hmm. and the world and my own uh, perspectives. I found more of myself. And so I just, I invited, I invited all of me to the forefront mm -hmm. of my own life. And so, and like, mm -hmm. that's, that's all it was. It was just like the expansion and all the other stuff that came along with it. It, it was inevitable. It was just gonna, it was just gonna sit there and wait for me to come in alignment anyway. You know, I yeah. lost 27 pounds because my body wanted to be aligned with my soul and my mind. You know, and that's really? all. You, know? you dropped how much? 127? Yeah. I was actually the, I was actually, I'm a bariatric patient too. So in 2020, I was the face of weight loss for my city. I was all on billboards and everything. Oh my gosh. Congratulations. And it wasn't because, wow. I, it wasn't because I lost a lot of weight because they actually, I had only probably lost about 75 pounds when they asked me to do it, to be a part mm -hmm. of the campaign. But they, the, the answer was, they were just like, we love your energy and your spirit mm -hmm. around what you're doing. And so mm -hmm. like, we thought that you would represent this well. And I was just like, when I weighed 315 pounds, I told all of my friends that you all were going to come to me and ask me to do this because of the way that I did it, not because of how much I did. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it actually mm -hmm. happened that way. So 11 months after I made that statement to all my friends, I was like, I'm doing a marketing campaign. And I was like in a commercial photo shoot and doing the thing and we all just laughed about it because they were just like girl you are really crazy because you just make this stuff up and wait for it to happen and i was like yeah i, I like it that way <laughs> because you're creating you're creating you're creating you're creating okay this is how i want to live and this is what i want to do and you're not asking anybody's permission to do it you either dr jane isn't that wonderful you're giving yourself permission to just mm -hmm live and to thrive okay mm -hmm. <laughs> respect mm -hmm. lots of respect well thank you so very much and uh come back anytime okay and i'll keep following you and i'll talk to you Brittany, after after the show because i have a two o'clock <laughs> I have another another appointment, but it was such a pleasure seeing your beautiful faces, hearing your fantastic journey and your story and the triumph and the liberation that came along with just self-discovery. And mm -hmm. thanks for sharing that. And thanks, mm -hmm. thank you, empowerment. Yeah. <laughs> Much. Thank you so much for the empowerment. Wow, I feel so much better. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany, when is the next class? Um, the gonna, next session? The first session is going to start on February 13th. Right now, there's a wait list out. You can find it on my Facebook page. I could imagine. And so there's a wait list right now that's being created so that you can have like all the juicy bonuses and every, all the stuff that comes with it. And you'll probably get the lowest price yeah, if you're on the wait list as well. Yeah. <laughs> and Jane, can you tell me uh, when is your next session? It's starting the end of February, the 23rd. And if you go to my website, you can get on a wait list for that too, for the master class. Awesome. Okie dokie. Well, thank you so very much. And we'll see you, I guess, at the next session. <laughs>
<laughs> Have Maybe a we'll be there naked together, Jennifer. Maybe oh we'll God. be naked. Well, why not? I'm not ashamed of my body. Did you see the photo that I posted? And I was sitting there and I'm like, okay, I can't show this part because then Facebook will either limit it or what they call it, uh, censor it. But I'm like, okay. And that made me feel so much better because I was like, they were saying, why, why did you take a photo like that? And da, 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 da. I'm like, at one time, I didn't even like myself, like yeah. for real. And now I can look at me with my flaws and all and say, damn, Jennifer, I love you today. Yeah, and I nice. are looking good. And I say <laughs> that to myself and it's okay. It's okay. And I'm like, all right then. So now I have to learn this other part. Well, I guess I'm going to have to really take your class now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to go there. <laughs> yes. She's magical. You got to go there. <laughs> Let her guide you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thanks again, ladies. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. I can say my sisters. Thank you so much, my sisters. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm really honored, humbled, and blessed, and very grateful to actually have met the both of you and to interact with the two of you. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Jennifer. You're Anna. welcome. Thank you. Until next time. Until next time. Until next time.